Hey guys, welcome to Tactical OP and Neo's Handguns and Reloading. I'm OP, and there's Neo. Hey guys, uh, this video is going to be on my 4 inch Walther PPQ M2 9mm. Okay, it's the M2, it has the button mag release instead of the paddle like the M1 has. But, um, uh, I've had this gun for probably about five or six months. I've only been out here a couple times with it. Uh, really like it. Uh, I carry, most of the time, I carry the 40 in the same size, same gun. So uh, I, it's something that I'm fairly comfortable with. Uh, the ergonomics of this gun is just amazing. Uh, it is so comfortable. It doesn't feel like you're holding a gun. It takes no effort. I mean... The contoured handle on here, the undercut trigger guard, it's just, it, it fits your hand really well. It's also somewhat customizable. Uh, it comes with changeable back straps, large and a medium here. I've got the small on the gun right now. Um, also comes with a mag loader, two 15 round mags. Uh, I've got a few extras that I've gotten for this gun. Uh, I've got the extended mag holds 17 rounds and then uh, a friend of mine that makes uh, really jam up custom kydex holsters uh, I've got a outside the waistband holster for this and also a uh, mag holster uh, he's, I also had him make me a uh, inside the waistband holster too appendix carry really like it like that too since you don't really have an extended beaver tail on here sticking up uh, this is a really great gun to if, if you like to appendix carry so, uh, all right, I got a few mags around, uh, loaded up, and let's take it over and give some test shots. Okay, let's uh, take a few test shots, and not too terribly far away. Here, let's uh, I'll go for that second target on the right. That silhouette there. Zoom in. Try that right there. You can see the light shining through from where I've blown the. Uh, blown apart the plywood behind it and that kind of that kind of does mess with you uh when you're trying to aim but uh we'll see how we'll see how it goes 15 rounds went pretty fast it is a very accurate very comfortable gun and hopefully as uh we get going through this video i'll get a little bit more uh used to shooting it I hadn't shot any of my walthers in a while so uh this trigger is a uh, it's it's really nice but it's uh light compared to anything else i have uh it's got a really good reset though uh every now and then i'll uh accidentally double fire but uh hasn't happened yet today hopefully it won't but uh let's Go through another mag, and uh, we'll just uh, run it on the target right next to it. Let's see how that works out. I think I can maybe see that one a little better. Back out here and adjust the camera for it. Just gonna kick it out to the side here. All right, let's go for that. 15 more rounds. a few strays then too mostly in the center but uh i knew i had one that was off and i think it was the lowest one there that i actually i knew was was out there but i got one worse than that over to the uh the right about two o'clock uh looks like i got 12 of them about where they need to be or real close to it all right uh load up the mags and uh we'll go over to the steel plates and goof off of that a little bit 
over here with uh, what I consider to be a little bit more fun shooting going after the uh, steel plates and the water bottles there so uh, I'll just uh, start probably with the uh, steel plate the yellow one on the left and and go left to right and then back and forth and and then maybe go after the water bottle so uh, here we go I got two mags uh, 15 rounds a piece One mag gone. Water bottles. Two mags gone fun gun to shoot now one thing I noticed when I was walking back over here is uh I hit every one of those water bottles high there's still water left in, in all three so uh we'll get to do that again here we go over the water bottles first there we got them low still Okay, talk about it a little bit while we're over here loading some mags up. Uh, Walther PPQ 9mm M2 4 inch barrel, uh, fully ambidextrous. It's cool. Uh, nice serrations front and rear on the slide, nice accessory rail. Uh, texture on the grip. It's not super aggressive, but I have no issues with the gun slipping at all. Undercut trigger guard, uh, very, very comfortable gun. Uh, the trigger, I don't know. A lot of people, uh, a lot of people say it's the best one there is stock. Uh, I have to, I have to agree with that. I mean, uh, I know some people have complained that uh, maybe it is a little too light. They're not comfortable with it for. Uh, you know as a carry weapon but um i think it's all a matter of getting used to it i mean i know some people that's got two pound triggers on carry weapons so it's it's not a uh you know it's, it's just a preference thing uh my vp9 i know it's got a heavier trigger on it and uh you know i kind of like the trigger on that gun too if uh, i would say this gun has competition as far as one of the top you know uh nine millimeter handguns uh, you know I put it there with a VP9 uh, it's just it's up there it is a high quality gun uh, it feels very solid I'm uh, just as always on my videos uh, using reloads that I've made I've had no feed issues with it uh, no failure to eject uh, it's just been great so far so uh, just about got these mags loaded up. We'll uh we'll take it in when we're done and uh field strip it and talk more about it, weigh it, and put the trigger pull gauge on it so uh gives a few more specs. But uh we're loaded up now. Let's uh let's hit the paper targets one more time. I got a uh target I picked up at the gun show, picked up a pack of them and uh it's just massive, but we can play with it. Okay, let's uh Let's do a more up close uh, personal defense here. Uh, just I want to be up on the target, just like somebody come up to me and uh, you know within reaching distance, and I have to jump back, pull from the holster, uh, try to pop two from from the hip as I come out of the holster, then uh, backing away, going for center mass, and then maybe a couple headshots. So let's see how that works out. There we go. All right, so uh, for this, it's going to be out of the holster. I do have one in the pipe. Uh, so uh, with chambered, we are 15 plus one. And I probably will not go through the entire mag. I'll probably just put about, you know, eight, nine shots in. But uh, all right, 
Let's give it a shot. All right, well, uh, I know before I ever did that, I had, let's look at the head real quick. I know I had one about it at each ear in the red guy already. So those on the outside of the head there, um, those were not the head shots I just did. I got those two pretty close together, would be about where his chin is, one right at the collarbone meeting the neck, and then kind of a line all the way down them uh so uh, i mean not terrible uh you know you don't it's just a point and shoot thing where you're coming out that fast so uh it just the trigger is really nice for that but uh that was 15 rounds that quick and i really didn't even mean to uh, it's just you just keep going Okay guys, just made a 9 degree turn from the table here where I'm loading up the mags and we have the uh, two bigger steel targets that are way out here. Uh, got the silhouette on the left and the gong on the right. Generally from this distance I just try to go after the silhouette. Uh, pretty challenging shot. So uh, see how this uh, 4 inch Walther PPQ M2 does at this range. I just had a misfire. Okay. Not sure about that. Uh, let me back the camera up here. We'll just stop stop shooting for room and holster this thing I just uh, ejected this misfire unzoom this thing see if we can okay try to get it where you can see now it's got the firing pin hit the hit the primer I don't know what that's about we will cycle this back through uh, if that's a it doesn't look like that's a that's a good dent in that primer it may just be a bad primer. We'll try to run it back through in a second just to see if we had a, uh, it doesn't really look like a, a light strike from the firing pin, but uh, I'll hold that one out to the side. And we'll see what went on with that. Uh, let's go ahead. We got that silhouette a couple times, so uh, I'll back up and then we'll go after that gong. Okay guys, now we're backed up uh, far enough to make that 24 inch gong challenging shot uh, okay there you can see the table on the left that's where I was shooting the silhouette from a while ago to tilt the camera down a little bit Leave. too much well, I hope I'm better at aiming the gun than I am the camera all right that's pretty good all right see if we can make that gong ring Oh no, first shot, I'll miss the rest. Okay, if you remember earlier, I had a round that didn't fire. Had a pretty good dent in the primer from the uh, firing pin, but doesn't look like it was a light strike, but we'll uh, put it as the first round, see if run it back through if it'll go, or we got a bad CCI primer. Let's see, I'm gonna go after that first rectangular white plate on the rack over here on the right and we got nothing okay uh yeah you don't see that very often with cci primer okay now that we're inside let's talk uh, a little bit more about this walther ppq nine millimeter m2 with four inch barrel all right uh comes with a pretty nice rugged case it up here got the soft foam in the lid uh, case candy that comes with it and target uh, manual and such 
behind that phone there. Nice dense phone uh, for the gun. Holds the gun well and the mags well. Uh, they don't move around much in there. Do a pretty good job. Fairly nice case. Uh, comes two 15 round mags, mag loader, and changeable back straps. So I got the uh, large and the medium here. I got the small on the gun. And at the end of the video, I'll go over how to change that back strap. It's really easy. All right. Uh, pause the camera for a second and we'll get the case off the table and talk about the gun itself. Okay. Real quick now. The Walther PPQ M2 9mm 4 inch barrel. Okay. Some of the features on this gun uh, fully ambidextrous. All right. And it is the M2. It has the push button mag release instead of the paddle like uh like the m1 all right but uh nice accessory rail front and rear serrations you can get a good bite on you got three dot sights nice big trigger guard i mean you can be wearing gloves get your finger in and out of the trigger guard no problem uh undercut trigger nice texture on the grip it's not too aggressive doesn't uh irritate your hand but I had no issues with it slipping either changeable back straps uh, you can go small medium and large I've got the small on here right now uh, let's see what else uh, 15 round mag and it does have from Walther available 17 round mag I think that's about 40 bucks so uh, let's uh, weigh this real quick Give the empty mag in it, see what we're getting. Let's see, one pound, one pound nine ounces. Okay, and just for, just for grins, let's put a mag with 15 rounds in it, full capacity. They are 124 grain, but I know that's going to vary a little bit with your ammo, but give you an idea of what you'll be looking at uh, weight with a uh, uh, full mag in it, right at two pounds. It's, the weight's really comparable with everything else in its class within a couple ounces, uh, probably about three to four ounces heavier than a Glock 19. You've got the same rounds as that, a uh, little bit higher bore axis than you do on a Glock. Uh, on a Glock 19, but uh, and you can there is slightly more recoil out of this gun uh, than a Glock 19. As far as like uh, with a VP9, uh, I think maybe this has a little bit more recoil than a VP9 as well. Uh, still, it's nominal; uh, it's not an issue at all. But uh, you do you do kind of notice the the bore axis being somewhat higher on it. Um, let's also, while we're at it, we'll put the uh, trigger pull gauge on it and talk about one of the most amazing things about this gun is this trigger. It's just unbelievable. Okay, let's see. All right, yeah, where we can see it here off the glare. Okay, four pounds, 8.2 ounces. All right, let's do it again. Four pounds, 10.1 ounces. And let's do one more. Kind of give us an idea, just a, an average here. If I can try to keep the screen of the trigger pull gauge where it's not going to glare out of the light. Four ten and a half. So, uh, you know, under five every time it's really nice, but that's not that's not only the nice thing about this trigger sound like I'm a Walther rep, but I'm not. I'm nobody, in nobody's back pocket, but this is a really fine gun with an excellent trigger on it. I do not believe, uh, in my opinion, uh, there's another stock trigger 
this good on on a starter fire anyway let's see uh okay we've got here's our take up my guess is and you feel absolutely no resistance right here in about this first about what i say eight millimeters of travel you start feeling a very slight bit of resistance from this point which is about i would say about 10 to 12 millimeters right there but the break and then the very short reset that is a definite i mean you you feel it you hear it right there and then it's just amazing okay when i first got my first ppq and i'm used to shooting uh let's see stuff like uh you know my sig 320 or mm, even even my vp9 okay the vp9 uh kind of it kind of sits in the middle between the sig 320 trigger and and this ppq trigger uh so that had me a little bit more prepared but uh still there was no real preparation for this trigger and the reset uh the short reset um get out there and i'm trying to ride the reset really before i was used to the gun and uh you know, it's like I'm bump firing. You know, I, I uh, double fire uh, probably. I bet I did it three times in the first 150 rounds I put through the gun. Uh, it's just it's easy to do until you get used to the trigger. But it is uh, pretty much a one of a kind trigger. So uh, we talked about that. Let's uh, let's break it down. Okay, just the way I like to do it. I pull back on the slide a little bit down on the release I let off the slide I set my thumb right here back by the sights putting the light pressure forward as I pull the trigger comes right off no issues at all okay so here's a slide pop out a recoil spring okay uh, one thing that just doesn't excite me is plastic guide rod with recoil spring okay but you know you can't have everything I guess here's our four inch barrel and our slide all right let's show the chassis of it a little bit and I mean this is another thing that's amazing about this gun the uh, the Palmer uh, Walter uh, did something a little different with it and it's almost like a a polished finish on it I mean it's just it's smooth it almost feels like you're you're rubbing against suede almost as I don't know like I said it may sound like I'm a Walther rep but this uh, when I first put a PPQ in my hand it was uh, I don't know you didn't want to let go of it it didn't feel like you're holding a gun you had no effort in it uh, put the gun down you oh no uh, do that again oh yeah there we go I mean, it's just amazing with the uh, undercut trigger guard, and uh, I mean, just the feel of it. It's like they had a mold of your hand. Weird, but uh, I'm not the only one that. I mean, you know, in almost every review or anything I've read about that, uh, people rave about the ergonomics of the gun and the trigger, and I have to say, yes, that's the two high points of this gun. All right, let's get this thing back together. All right, got a slide. Drop her barrel in. So, recoil spring. All right, now we're ready to put the slide on. Okay, we we'll just line it up. Get it where you get it in the camera better here. Okay, just like any other one, line it up, slide it on. All you gotta do is just drag it past the catch here, and you're done. Okay, it's all back together. All right, Walther PPQ. My final thoughts on it is is just, wow, what a great gun. If I could think of any complaints on this gun, okay, it would be, uh, like I said a while ago, uh, you know, in, in a perfect world, it would have a steel guide rod for the recoil spring, and it would be available from the manufacturer with night sights. Okay, I I do not like these sights. I think they're very cheesy for this quality of a firearm. The plastic three dot sights. Um, 
is adjustable in the windage on the rear sight, but uh, you know, in my opinion, uh, they gotta go. Uh, Trijicon has some nice, nice uh, sights for these. Uh, the HDs are really nice. Uh, my coworker has this exact same gun. Uh, he's got the one with the, uh, the Trijicon HDs, and it's got the uh, orange outline on the front sight. And uh, it, you can pick it up really easy. I mean, the, the difference between drawing my gun and, and taking aim in his is night and day. I mean, it's apples and oranges. Uh, an upgrade that I uh, highly recommend is sights. And it, it is a shame. I like buying my guns. Uh, when I buy a new gun, I like, if it's available with night sights, I like to get it with the night sights from the factory. Uh, usually you can save, you know, 50, 75 bucks in doing so, uh, as opposed to outright buying night sights. So, uh, I think that should be something that Walter should look at on there. Uh, and I have contacted them, uh, for asking them if, if it was possible to even, you know, can we order this gun from you with night sights in it? No, it is these, uh, these three dot plastic sights. So, uh, you know, I guess not big complaints all stuff that can be changed so it's not like uh it's not like you're stuck with it but you know you are looking another 140 dollars or something like that uh unless you know if you want the trijicon hds if you want you know you can get the uh the dawson's if you want fiber optic in the front or something like that uh i think you can come in about 80 bucks on that which uh there's really good sites too so um you know there are options there so let's uh let's go over the uh changing the back strap real quick. All right, I'm using a three thirty seconds punch, but uh you can go up to an eighth inch punch without actually damaging the hole here. Is the hole's a little slightly bigger than the eighth inch it looks like, so eighth inch punch still gives you a little wiggle room. You won't uh expand the hole by using eighth inch, but uh I can't find my eighth inch, so I'm using three thirty seconds. So okay, so I'm just going to on this roll pin right here, I want to put pressure and push on it. See it coming out right there. Put my hand behind it so I can catch it. Pull that all the way out. All right. Now you'll see a little, almost like a fingernail groove right there. Hook the fingernail in it, pull back. And you got a little ear that fits down in this slot. You get all the light. Okay, see that slot there? Okay, and that's it. That's all there is to it. Pick whichever one you want, small, medium, or large. Take that ear there, hook it into this slot, and then just push it into place, like so. Grab your roll pin, and push it on back through like so here and you can be very OCD like I am and make sure that it is perfectly centered just needs a little bit more just picky like that but there you go uh, if I was to put anything in a nine millimeter striker fire gun next to this gun it would be a VP9 um, that's what I think about it. I think there's, they're good and bad. Uh, you know, you can pick high points on either gun. I, I'm not going to say bad on anything between those two guns, but uh, you can pick high points on either gun, and I think it's a matter of preference. And uh, I'd like to thank you for watching. Once again, any questions, leave them in the comments section.